Hi everyone. As most of my friends know, I don't have a dedicated woodworking space, so I always have to bring tools to use for a day from my garage. I don't really feel the inconvenience of it, but I've been wanting somewhere that I can rest my soles when not using. So I made this. This is a saw and clamp rest. Now my soles don't have to invade my working space on my desk. Isn't it cool? Let's see how I made it. I'm not a big fan of red oak, but this is a leftover from a mitre shooting board project. And I got it from the Home Depot. As it's almost S4S and the face was almost flat, I roughly rip it first and dimension it. Oh, let me tell you a reason why I don't use a vice to plane on the edge, but I use a shooting board. It's because in this way, I only have to care about one dimension that I can see easily from the above like the picture. It's much easier to achieve a nice straight line. Then, I clean the face and cut them into the lengths I need it. Moving on to the framework, I cut tenons and mortises. For the mortise, I basically did the same way as I explained in the previous tutorial video. All I can say is, if you are a beginner, don't be afraid of trying this basic joint. You'll get used to it. I think it's actually a faster way to be able to cut a clean mortise rather than looking for a gimmicky magical tool. Now the tenons. At this time, as the mortise side has a good enough width, I only shaved one eighth of an inch off from top and bottom of the wood. So I made a relief cut and just did powering. Both ends of the tenon will be cut off so I don't even worry about the edge to be broken by this powering. One thing I noticed from handling this red oak is, it's pretty hard but fibers won't break easily like softer wood so it's easy to achieve a crisp joint, even though it doesn't mean it's beginner friendly. I think softer wood is still quicker to fabricate and easier overall. Okay, here I work on the bridal joint. I need to say please do not pound the chisel on an unstable place like my setup. It makes a big difference in the chisel efficiency. This is just one of two joints and I was lazy cleaning up on the table and I didn't want to move the camera, so I did it in this way. This is actually my first time cutting the bridal joint. And for the other side of the joint, I don't know why I cut it off this much. I think a quarter inch could have been more than enough for a chamfering reason. Then I did powering on the sides and that's it for this joint. Now I got make the shelves to hold saws and clamps. To be honest, I didn't have a solid design idea of this project at the beginning, so this project took my three days. It's always better and efficient if you know all the details to begin with. Oh, again, to make a small rabbit up to one eighth of an inch, this Japanese marking gauge is so useful. 
even on the red oak, I just go it from two sides and then cut it by knife. Of course, it needs a chisel to clean it, but yeah, it's so easy. I also made a rabbit on the sides, but for this one, I just used the chisel. After the rabbit, I made grooves where the shelves go in. I thought it's easy to use a router plane to cut the groove to begin with, but I found using a chisel is a lot faster for rough cut. Then, with the router plane and chisel combo, I finished the bottom and the side walls. I often do this rabbit and groove joint, so it seems like I finally get used to it. Finally, I can cut slots to hold the saw. I found marking 530 seconds to 3 sixteenths of an inch slot by a knife and cutting it on the marking line with a detail saw will make a perfect slot width for most Japanese saws with an interchangeable blade. Just for your information, my rough plan looked like the picture. If you want to make something like mine, I think most of the saws including Ryoba saw can fit in it. But, just be sure about the distance from the backboard or possibly a wall, so a blade doesn't hit against the backboard. In addition to it, because of the grain direction, I thought the saw holder can be easily snapped, and I was going to put splines across the grain to reinforce it. However, as I hammered a test piece that I used to find the best slot width for my saws, they were pretty strong. So, I didn't do anything to reinforce it. After this saw holder cutout, I just chamfered all the corners. So far, everything went okay, but my lack of attention caused one mistake. I did a bridal joint on the same thickness wood, so I shouldn't have chamfered the legs all the way, but only one corner, I stupidly went all the way. Oh well, it happened. And after gluing all the pieces, here is the final product. If you watched my past videos, you know it's kind of rare that I say so, but I like this one. I usually keep two to three saws and these six clamps with me, so I think this is more than enough for my use. I actually had another plan to make something similar but easier that my fellow beginner can make as a practice. I'm wondering if you are interested in this kind of content. Then I can make a design and video of making it for you. Of course it's free. Oh, hey, there's still time for my t-shirt thing, so I would appreciate your help on it. Please check out the detail in the description. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!